Brother Dave Williams uh, posted something on social media and it got really to, uh, to, to kind of crush my heart. Uh, Proverbs 15, starting in verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of wise make knowledge acceptable, but the mouth of fools spouts folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. A fool rejects his father's discipline, but he who regards the fruit is sensible. Listen to what that says. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. Friends, just because you are sick does not mean that you cannot have a sharp tongue to others and hurt your witness from things that are of no eternal gain. What is it going to profit us here on earth if our witness is anger and reticence and more hatred for those who are not like us? And when I say that, you can take that literally however you want. Because I mean in all those situations, race, color, wealth, all of these things, politics, any division, what will it profit us if the serpent's tongue is in the mouth of the holy? God did not purchase you at a price to call you his own so that you might claim your own rights all the time. Now there's a time for claiming rights. Uh, Paul doesn't. In, in a couple of different places. There are times to claim those rights, but the reason Paul claims them has nothing to do with him himself. He does it in order to be a witness for Christ Jesus. Just keep those words in your heart, and I encourage you to read the rest of Proverbs 15 because it's uh, very pointed towards some of the things that I see going on with, personally, my brothers and sisters. Listen, how those who hate us act is of no concern to us. Hey, that's right. Hey. Seriously, how they act is of no concern to you. It's of no concern to me. Teach little kids to respect each other, not because someone respected them, but because you're all human, because you were all created in the image of God. Let's start acting like it. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning, we come to you humble, we come to you seeking your face. We ask that you would continually mold us so that at some point you will mold us completely when we see you face to face in the image of your son, Father. We ask that you lead us and you guide our footsteps and, and just as importantly, Father, we ask that you guide our mouths, guide our hearts for, for, to forgiveness for those who may not even want forgiveness. Father, it says more about the heart you placed in us than we forgive. We love because you first loved us. Let us remember it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve.
says we serve a terrible God. Not terrible in the sense that we know it. In the Hebrew, it means an awesome God. Go we serve an awesome God. Give him a hand song of praise.
from 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. This is Paul speaking. It is not expedient for me to doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one who was caught up into the third heaven. Now, we're not talking about three levels of heaven, as some would have you to believe. There is the atmospheric heaven where the clouds are and the fowls of the air fly. There is the planetary heavens where the sun, moon, and stars and all the planets in their orbit is. But then there is the third heaven. The third heaven is the place where Jesus Christ dwells with the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's what I want to speak about this morning is what kind of place is heaven? Who's going to heaven? And who is not going to heaven? Revelation 14. Verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from thy labor, and thy works do follow them. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are rewarded according to our works. And the question you need to ask this morning is what kind of material is my works? What kind of material is my works? Now the Bible speaks of in 1 Corinthians when he talks about those that build on hay, wood, and stubble, thy works will be consumed. But those that build our lives on gold, silver, and precious stone cannot be consumed. The Bible speaks of all through Revelation. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold thou fast to what thou hast. Let no man take thy crown. What kind of place are we going? First of all, it is a place of rest. Jesus said unto his disciples in Matthew's Gospel, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It, this place called heaven is a place of rest, but it's also a place of knowledge. I'm, I'm asked this question very, very often, especially dealing with families who have had someone to pass away. Will we know each other in heaven? Absolutely, we will know each other in heaven. I want to give you a passage of scripture, and if you, you, uh, this is the answer to that question. In Matthew chapter number 8, verse 11, it says, And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verse 12. He says, For we see through a glass darkly. In other words, we don't see things in its authenticity. He says, We see through a glass darkly 
It's like, like wearing sunglasses. But he said, when we see Christ face to face, that we will be known, listen, I want you to get that word, we will be known even as we are known. Thank God that we will know our loved ones that have died in the faith, we will know them in heaven. Heaven is a place of rest. It's a place of knowledge. It's a place of, of communion with the saints and praising the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many questions that people ask about that place. I hope this morning in this message that I answer some of those questions. And let me, let me include this. The moment, the very moment, the very split second that a saved person dies, they are ushered right into the presence of God. They don't go to some place, a holy place. They go exactly in the presence of, of the Lord. That's why the Apostle Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank God for that promise that the moment we draw our last breath here, we draw our next breath in heaven. And I thank God that God has so designed that that we don't go to a place of holding. You say, well, Pastor, what about those that are buried? Let me tell you something. Job said, naked I came into this world, naked I shall leave this world. And the Bible says from, from dust we came, from dust we will return. And when Christ Jesus in all of his glory come to get the saints of God, all the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I don't have any problem how God's going to fix it our bodies. But I'll tell you this, in heaven, we'll have a glorified body. A body made exactly like the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in my message last week, I quoted this passage of scripture, but it's so applicable to, to this, this uh, sermon, I want to quote it again. The Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God, and he doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know, listen to this, not think, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Thank God for that promise. Heaven is a place of rest. Heaven also is a place of light. Well, how can you talk about that in reference a person got to die? You go to heaven. Listen to what Revelation chapter number 21 says. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Now, I want to explain that because a lot of people are very uh, uninformed. When John writes this 21st chapter of Revelation, and I, I've heard people say, well, you know, no tears in heaven. He is speaking about that new heaven. That new heaven. John said that, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven. And the first stuff were passed away, and there were no more sea. And he's speaking about that new heaven, a place of life, a place where we exist, a place where we will sing praises unto a, the Almighty God. Don't it make you want to go? Amen. 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 Heaven is a place of rest, but heaven is a place of life, but heaven is also a place of happiness. Revelation 7, 17, it says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. 
and God shall, here he goes again, shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that God bottles our tears. But in heaven, in heaven, there will be no more death, no more pain for all the former things the scripture says have passed away. The heaven is a place of purity. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. This is the blessing that we pray every Sunday out of Jude verse 24. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and, and this is the key part, and to present you faultless as though you never in your life sin and it's all because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. You know I read earlier in 2 Corinthians 12 when Paul says he was caught up into the third heaven. And he said he used language like this. It's unlawful for me to speak of what I witnessed. Now I will say this, and I may burst some people's bubbles on this. You hear people say, well, I went to heaven and God talked to me and I came back. That's a lie. That, that, that is a lie. The apostle Paul, he said, I was caught up into heaven and I saw things that, that I couldn't even put in human language and then he goes on to say it was unlawful for me to speak of. So don't go running to the bookstore every time you hear somebody say I died and, and God talked to me and I came back to this earth to tell you they're telling you a lie. He Paul says I can't even describe what I saw. And not everybody's going to heaven. Let me answer the question, who's going to heaven? All of the redeemed of God, all of those that have put their personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't say all of those that have been baptized are part a member of a church. Those things come after salvation. They're not a prerequisite to salvation. Salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So those that have asked Jesus Christ, let me put it in, in child language, those who have asked Jesus Christ, invited Jesus into their heart, are the only one that's going to heaven. The only one that are going to heaven. And God's grace was so wide and so deep that the thief on the cross recognized that Jesus was the Son of God. And this is what he said. Remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. Now notice what Jesus' answer was. He said, this day, not tomorrow, not that you go through some confirmation class or you go through this class. He said, this day, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. That man that was saved on the cross when he cried out to Jesus was saved yet so as by fire that the Bible speaks of in Corinthians. Those that are saved yet so as by fire. Not everybody is going to heaven. Jesus makes that plain in the Gospel of Matthew. When they were crowd says, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not in thy name did many wonderful works? Have we not in thy name cast out devils? Listen to what Jesus says. He said, depart from me, 
ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Heaven is a place of rest. It's a place of life. It's a place of purity. And there is no sin in heaven. Sinners go there. There are two types of sinners. There are saved sinners and lost sinners. Only the saved go to heaven. Don't let anybody tell you my so-and-so was such a, 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 a good, benevolent person and they did this and they were outstanding in the community and, and, and if anybody makes it, they will. Well, if they wasn't saved, they don't make it. Heaven is a place of praise and worship. Listen to what Revelation 5, 12 says. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I want to interject this. There will be some people in heaven that you think didn't make it. That would not have made it. And there will be some people in hell that you would have thought would have went to heaven. Not everyone says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But only those that do the will of the Father. Heaven is a place of worship. The Bible says that we will cast our crowns before him and we will worship him day and night. Let me tell you this. The first person that you will see if you're saved when you get to heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ. I've heard people say, well, when I get to heaven, the first person I'm going to look up is my parents or my son or daughter that passed away or whatever. No, that's not right. That's not true. The first person Listen to me. The first person that you will see in heaven is the one that died on the cross and shed his precious blood. And that's, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will say to you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Because thou hast been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. God gives us knowledge to know each other in heaven. Listen to what Matthew chapter 8 verse 11 says. And folks, you can't argue with this scripture. You can't rationale this scripture out of the Bible. Because it says this. We will recognize each other in heaven. Listen. And I said unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down, listen to this, shall sit down and he gives their name, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, we'll know our loved ones that died in the faith in heaven because the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 13, we will be known even as we are known. God will give you a greater capacity to know your loved ones down here uh, that, that's in heaven with you than you have down here. A greater capacity to know them. Not know about them, but to know them. Listen to what that scripture. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. I've had people ask me this question down through the years. Will we know our loved ones in heaven? Will we know them as we know them? God will give you a greater capacity to know them. And I'm telling you this, my friends. When I get there, and when you get there, 
The first one you will look for is the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll be there with open arms. And he also, you will know your love. The Bible says, for we see through a glass darkly. We see through a glass darkly. It's just like looking at light through a pair of sunglasses. We don't see the objects in its full authenticity. Because it is veiled from us. But the Bible says when we get to heaven, that we will be known even as we are known. That's considered in Christendom as heavenly recognition. Heavenly recognition. The Bible speaks of that place as a place of happiness. Thank God. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. It's a place of happiness. The place Do you know what else? It's a place of knowledge. God will give you a greater capacity to know each other more. We see in part that then we shall be known even as we are known. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there were no more seen. And I, John, saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's in the new heaven. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. We will be known even as we are known. Heaven would not be heaven if there were not such a thing as heavenly recognition. And I'm sure, and I may be making a presumptuous statement, but I feel sure what I'm saying is 100% true. Every person that is under the sound of my voice has a loved one in heaven. Don't it make you want to go there? Yeah. Heaven is a place of comfort. They shall hunger no more, neither shall thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Heaven is a place of comfort. When Jesus spoke about in 1 Thessalonians 4 about the imminent return of him coming in the rapture, he says these words in 1 Thessalonians 4. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We will know each other in heaven and thank God for heavenly knowledge.
We're not just going to heaven. We're not going to heaven to float up on a cloud with wings. <laughs> We're going to heaven. First of all, because we know Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. And second of all, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not the way. Jesus said, I'm the way, not a way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. Heaven is a place of knowledge. Listen to what it says. For I know in part. But then shall I know even as I am also known. Do you know that God will give you a greater capacity to know your loved ones in heaven than you have down here? You say, well, preacher, I know, I know my kids pretty well. I know my, I know my parents pretty well and my siblings. God will give you a greater capacity to know them. Not know about them, but know them in heaven. We see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, he says, we will be known even as we are known. He gives us a greater capacity, my friends, to know each other in that beautiful place where eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Don't it make him want to go there? Heaven is a place of knowledge. Heaven also is a place of health. Revelation 21.4 Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Songwriters put it like this, had a vision of heaven, what these eyes they did see. As I viewed way up yonder in the sweet eternity, thought I'd entered that city, and I stopped at the gate. So anxious to enter, I could hardly wait. Oh yes, over yonder is a face I remember still. It's the old-fashioned preacher from the church upon the hill. And then he goes on to say, for I must keep on walking. So many faces more, so many more faces that, that I am looking for. That a vision of heaven. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Heaven is a place of happiness. Thank God for that. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And I want you to get the last part of this verse. Everybody here get this. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The songwriter has put it like this. Tears are a language that God understands. God bottles our tears. Heaven is a place of rest, it's a place of life, it's a place of purity, it's a place of praise and worship. And let me interject this on this point. Get in on the rehearsal down here so you'll be ready for the big part when you get to heaven. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to run that by you one more time. Get in on the rehearsal down here so you'll be ready for the big part when you get to heaven. Heaven is a place of happiness. It's a place of knowledge. 
It is a place of comfort. That was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus sitting at the gate. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and he desired the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, and both of them died. One went to hell, the other one went to heaven. Hell is a horrible place. The Bible says it was created for the devil and all his angels. If you're not saved and you go there, you are an unwelcome guest. I'm so glad that by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's prepared a place for us. And the scripture says, for we know in this earth the house of this tabernacle where it is all. We have a building of God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Don't it make you want to go there? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen. Would you give the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord in the house of the Lord. And if you don't know that you're going to that place, you can know today. You say, Pastor, how can I know? The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God, as Hebrews says, he is prepared for us something better. If you would like to speak to me of some of these other pastors that are here, and you're not sure that you're going to heaven, let me tell you, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. Because hell is a terrible place to be. Let's stand and pray the blessing. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the all-wise God with exceeding great joy. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, thank you for this time together. We pray in Christ's name, and all of God's children said, Amen. God bless you.